Hello and welcome to Interaction Design Module 2 Tutorial 6. What are we going to be doing today? We are still working on P5 audio form storming. Sound, speech, that kind of thing. Each tutorial has been experimenting with a specific way P5 explores sound. We've explored synthesizing sound and voice, playing an audio file. We've been accessing the microphone in the browser. Um, and with a voice response where we can give a command and have P5 recognize a word. Today we're exploring how to use P5 with machine learning audio. This tutorial will show you how to train a machine learning model to recognize audio and control an outcome using P5. If you remember working on photogrammetry last term, it's also a type of machine learning where the computer at that time it was using images and through getting enough images it could start to discern what was an object and what was background noise. But you need to feed the computer that kind of data in order for it to speculate. Giving it all this data for it to learn is called training a model. Machine learning requires multiple examples for the computer to approximate and identify objects or audio from other things we're going to be focusing on audio. We're going to be using a web app called Teachable Machine. Um, it is a web-based tool. It's created by Google that allows for easy entry into machine learning. It is really easy and quick to train your first model. And training the model means teaching the computer to recognize data to learn or identify a pattern and then label it. And that is basically what we're gonna be working on is learning how to train a model, label the data, and then access that data using P5. So let's look at what it takes to train a model. So this is the Teachable Machine website. And you can see that um, there's a get started. Actually, you know what? Let's go back there for one second. So here you can see um, they're showing you uh, just an image of uh, recognition, right? So this is the model guessing uh, or the computer using the model to guess what it's looking at, what it's hearing, that kind of thing. So you can see that it can tell between two different states this way. So in a lot of ways, it's like a Boolean right and it's using that sort of boolean state but instead of it just being straight off or on or yes or no it's able to guess that way right it gives its best guess based on the uh being shown the data again so if we go over to getting started you'll see that there are a few different options here there's an image project an audio project and a pose project and it uses maybe posenet but it's using some kind of skeletal um data tracking. We're going to be doing an audio project. Please feel free on your own to go in and check out these other ones. So if you click on uh, audio project, what you'll find is, is you get to this page, which very much feels like a node kind of page, right? Where we have, um, let's see if I can move this out a tiny bit more there. There we go. You can see that we have a background noise panel. We have a class two panel, it says, and you can see we can add more classes. And then we have the actual training itself. And then we have this idea of preview, right? You must train a model on the left before you can preview it here. So let's take a look at what that means. So the first thing it's want, gonna wanna do is access your microphone. So I'm gonna set my microphone here and you can switch your microphone. I'm setting mine to my Scarlett. And what you need it to do first is record 20 seconds of background noise. And it needs this so that once you start to make sounds, right, uh, and it doesn't matter what those sounds are. You could play a musical instrument. You could clap your hands. Um, you could use specific words. But you need to start by recording background noise so it knows how to get rid of the noise. So again, thinking of the photogrammetry example where you had the object and the noise, this is a way of, it would be as if you were going to take pictures of your background before you took pictures of the object in it, and then the photogrammetry could easier identify what was the background. So here, let's.
There we go. So um, you have to stay quiet, right? You do want the ambient noise around, like the normal noise that would be in the area that you're going to be recording. Um, but you do have to be quiet while it's happening. You can't be talking in the background um, or humming or doing anything else. Once you do that, you extract your sample. And it will then, you can see there's 20 samples. So, and it's 20 minimum. So now it's got some background that it can use to discern like what is not the background. So one of the things I suggest you do is immediately um, change the name of your classes to things that are about the object itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one. I'm going to call it hello. And then we're going to go back to Mike for this one. Uh, I'm going to get back on my Scarlet and I'm going to record several um, samples of saying hello enough. I'm going to, well, I want 20. Okay. Hello. And each time I do that, I'm going to press extract sample because otherwise it just rewrites over it. Okay. Hello. 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 All right, I did a little more than 20. Um, and then, so we've got that sample case ready and, oh, out of class. Yeah, I'll keep that inside the window, okay. So I'm going to call this one goodbye. And I'm going to again choose my Scarlet. Goodbye. 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 All right, so there's our 20 samples. Now I do find it funny how, you can see how some of them are, like they're not all of the actual sample from the looks of things. And I'm not sure if that's because it is, um, even though it uses the two seconds, perhaps it only uses one. Uh, I'm curious what happens if I get rid of the ones that are definitely not good samples where they're missing that sort of data. I did find that when I was playing with this that it didn't always get a good sample size. So we're gonna try this again with a few more. Goodbye. 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 does seem to be that it splits it up in the two. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to try this slightly differently this time. Goodbye. 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 Yeah, I think that's actually the right way. Interesting. So we'll see how that one goes. I'm playing with this and testing out some ideas that um, makes me want to kind of come back here and check this one out again. But actually, you know what? Oh, uh, right. See how some of these are just blanks, and blanks are going to give you 
closer to this. So you don't want that. You know what? I'm going to come back here and I'm going to actually uh, redo some of these now that I'm rethinking that. Okay. Hello. 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 It's way better. That's awesome. Okay. So that is definitely the way that works. So I'm going to add, uh, so you can see they'll always name them, right? So I've got hello, goodbye, and let's uh, do one more. We're going to make it whatever. Access the microphone. <clears throat> whatever, whatever. Whatever, 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 whatever. Whatever, 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 whatever. All right, let's see how that does. So now you can see we've got three models that are trained, right? Hello, goodbye, and whatever. We, um, and they're all linked to training this model. So the next step is to come in here with these three and train a model. And then you sit back and wait. The preview will pop up when it's finished training the model and you can see immediately that it's trying to and it's listening through the microphone and it's guessing and you can see that none of these although you know the the goodbye is getting up and you see it popped up there to 98 percent but even as i'm talking it's doing its best to figure out what's background and what's one of these basically trained model triggers now you can see that other, you do get false positives, right? Like there are words and it could be that it's using the cadence in my voice, the tone, um, there's different elements that it's using. And what we're trying to do is just see how well it does accessing the difference between background noise. So let's see. You can see that when I don't talk at all, there's nothing. So it can tell the difference between the background noise. Hello. Goodbye, whatever, pretty good. Now, how do you use this? So if you come up here to the export model, this will pop up another window. And in this window, you can see that it's using TensorFlow, right? So TensorFlow.js and TensorFlow Lite are uh, machine learning models and they are Google. And in fact, we've used different TensorFlow things in, uh, in other grades. You might even get a chance to use them in third year. Um, but specifically, this is we're going to work with TensorFlow. It's a little more powerful, and because we're on a desktop, we can get away with it. In this case, we want to upload. We want a shareable link because that way we don't actually have to have the, anything downloaded, right? Um, and this is really a great way of, of doing this because you can get in here and, and actually get access to your model immediately. Now, in order to do that, you need to upload your model because right now, um, it's sort of just being used in this local browser, right? So we're going to upload it. And when it uploads, you'll see that this shareable link will suddenly go live and you will be able to take this link 
pop it into the code and we'll go further. Now, further down, you can actually see that they already have like an actual full JavaScript on how to access the, the model itself and the data. If you wanna go in here and, and take this, absolutely. Go in here and experiment with this. Um, sorry, that's the JavaScript one. There's a P5 one, it's already ready to go, right? And you can see that it's using just the, the web links. It's using that ML5 library. Most of, of what we're using is directly out of here. We're just playing with the way it's working sort of in the, the draw function. Okay, so if we scroll up, now you can see that it's updated, or sorry, this is if you wanna update the model. Um, this is the shareable link. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna grab this and you could just press copy. Um, I'm kind of old school that way, control V. And I'm actually not going to uh, get rid of it. I'm gonna just kind of keep it here um, while I then go down and uh, let's open, I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code and you can see that I actually already have um, a version of this running, right? So what is going on here? Let's, let's, you know what, let's go right from the start. Let's look at the index. You can actually see that it's using those exact elements. It's got the machine learning uh, um, script um, um, URL as the link, right? It's looking at, uh, it's not using sound or speech though, right? It really is, oh, wait a minute. No, there's P5 sound, my bad. P5 sound.min, P5.min, and the ML5.min uh, uh, library in the JavaScript, right? And again, you can see this is another Daniel Schiffman coding train, right? So he's taken the um, stuff that we were basically looking at on the website, and he's just played with it a little bit in a fun way, and I thought we might as well use the same fun way. There's lots of places you can go with it once you know how to do this. So um, if we look down here, we can see that we've got this let label equals waiting, right? And this is, uh, this let label is going to be important for us because label is what we're using to identify the um, uh, model um, information, the data, right? So it is going to use the label uh, variable to add a value, and that value is going to be what we are going to be um, using. So when we gave our uh, models names like hello, goodbye, and whatever, instead of class one, class two, class three, those are the labels. Uh, let classifier, so we've created a variable called classifier, let model. So this was, uh, and it may even end up being the same, but let's, I'm gonna, there's my new, nope, there's my new code. So I'm gonna pop in my link right there. That's the model URL that it's going to access, right? And it's a basically a publicly accessible model. You can see that there's a, um, and you know what? Uh, I have not updated the code to be arrow functions. It might be updated by the time you get it, but um, this is working fine, so it may just stay like this as well. Function preload, right? So it's preloading that classifier. So we've we've declared the classifier uh, variable. We are defining it. The classifier is an ML5 sound classifier, which is going to use the model URL, right, as, as one of plus the model.json. So this, uh, when we talk about JSONs, we haven't really talked about them much. Um, JSONs are used to either uh, get or post data, and you often need to have access to be able to do that. So this last part here is most likely what it would be, be like an access code, and the access code is going to allow the model.json file um, in, to specifically access this model. So if you think about like weather data that you might wanna get for an app or GPS data that you might wanna get for a, a mapping um, app. So these are the kinds of things where you need to have a JSON because the server on the other end needs to know that you are a person looking for data and you have access to that and not just a, uh, a bot that's basically um, scraping data. And that, that basically when you think about that, a bot scraping data can do it like thousands of times a, a, a minute, right? And so therefore that really puts a lot of pressure onto websites. And so JSONs are used as ways to kind of get access, right? It's almost like your own access card that gets you, gets you in. And you need to have a password and specific information to kind of get into them. Even if they're public, the JSON will be the sort of method that's used to, to either post data 
or to get data. So the function setup, you can see this just create canvas, display width, display height, and it's using that classify audio. Uh, is it? Let me see. Classify audio. Have we mentioned it yet? No. So uh, it's calling the classified audio function because classify, sorry, function classify audio is right here. It's using the classifier, right? So it's using this ML5 sound classifier um, and it's classify got results. So this format is going to get the results using the URL and the, um, the specific JSON access file. In our draw, you can see that we're running a background of zero, so it's going to be black. Um, you can see that some text has, uh, has been commented out, and that would be a first place to go and play with to start you know, adding some text back into the fields and start seeing how that works. But here's really the main part of this. So the text align is, is set to center center, which means also the, uh, the method we're gonna be using here is gonna still be centered because even though it's not necessarily text directly, you can see that it's using this sort of idea of emojis. Now, let emoji is just a word right? Emoji is not um, some kind of a, a library in uh, P5. It's just let emoji. So in this case, you can see that it's the emoji. If the if it's just the background noise, it's let emoji equals and it's these headphones, right? So so when it doesn't think there's a model, it will do the headphones. If label equals hello, right? So if so think about it this way. Right now, there is nothing happening on the page that's going to be guessing anything. It is using the JSON file to access the model that's actually running in the background, right? And specifically when it, he when it hears a word, it's going to be identifying whether the machine learning model hears the word and recognizes it because we've trained it to hear that word. So if it hears the word and that word is going to be hello, right? So just for a second, let me pull up the web page again, and I will uh, let's let's kind of move it over a bit so we can see it. I'm going to just close that. We just want to be over here. There we go. So now we can still see those results. Goodbye. Okay. So if the label equals hello, emoji equals that one. Else, if the label equals goodbye, it will be a heart. Else, if label equals whatever, it will be the, um, that's a, I think it's um, guitar. Oh, this one is a train, because it was a coding train um, tutorial. Um, and then you can see that there's a text size. So you can actually adjust the size of the uh, emojis themselves. Um, the text is based on sort of, it's using that emoji object that we've created and it's putting it width to height to. And then there's a, f a function called function got results, which is just if there's an error, it would post the error in the console, right? Console the error. Uh, and otherwise it's gonna post the results, right? Uh, label equals results zero. So this is going to be working from an array. So this is taking the got results from the website and it's turning it into um, an array. And in the array, it's gonna be one of those three, right? So there's only three elements in the array, but you could have as many as Google will allow you to do. Let's test this. So we're gonna go live ourselves. And I think I'm going to need to just open this up, though, because it, it is actually um, it's running. It is running the display width and not the window width. There we go. And that's what I wanted to test. So I'm going to be quiet for a second and let's see. So you can see that the background is working. However, look at how much the guesswork is happening, right? Like I'm not even making that noise at all. I haven't said, hello, 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 goodbye, 
goodbye, goodbye, whatever, whatever. It's funny how it actually confuses a few of them a little bit there, even with the amount of training that was going on. So um, certainly it, it causes a lot of curiosity for me that has to do with whether or not um, it's going to be more effective the more models there are. Like it says 20, but maybe really this is uh, better to do with um, 40, right? Perhaps 40 will make a difference because it is certainly confusing some of this right now. It could also be a lot more fun to try with a sound, right? So as opposed to the P5 speech library or even the, the, the um, audio one with the microphone where it's just responding to the things it's hearing, um, in this case, it would be very interesting to see whether you could use a sound, a musical instrument, to provoke a specific response that way. And that's really the kind of thing we want you guys to be thinking of because what we're, what we're trying to do here is get you guys a little bit of a taste of what it is to play with some machine learning with P5 to see how easy you can go in here and access this. Another way of playing with this would be specifically change these up. Like you don't have to use emojis. This is just playing with it, right? Whether it's, I mean, you could play with the text, right? Um, or specifically, you can come in here and turn these into different objects that you would wanna play with. This is going to be the kinds of areas you can go in and play with the mechanics, but also then be playing with the aesthetics. So let's pull up our lecture. We actually went through the code and the teachable machine where our, we're, we're at the end here. So with your P5 machine learning form storming, what we want you to do is experiment with the code. Head to Teachable Machine, train your own model, train several of your own models, train them in one big group like I did, right? Several classes. Add your model, so add that URL once you upload it. Add your model to the provided P5 code and replace the emojis with other kinds of objects and assets, right? And again, go in, play with the mechanical way the code works, then play with the aesthetic way the code looks, follow your curiosity, even if it breaks the code, and always save your versions every time, all right? Whenever you hit that aha moment, it's a pretty special thing, actually. And with that, start form storming. <laughs>